Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I'm glad uh, and I'm excited because uh, we are going to dig, we are going to uh, hear the word of Elohim. And we know that sometimes, even if it looks like we don't see things happen at once, right away, we know that his word never come back to him uh, empty. All the time, his word uh, fulfill the purpose for which Elohim sent it. So we are sure that uh, we are going to receive something. We are going to uh, be blessed with the word of Elohim. So, so let's start. So they we keep on with the series of the tabernacle part 17, 67. I would like only to give thanks to Yeshua for this word. Elohim, here we are in your presence. Thank you for the privilege you gave me this morning to share your word. We know that, that uh, the angel, they would like to uh, share this message, this powerful mes message, but you uh, gave to us to to spread the good news, your word. Thank you, because who am I that you are mindful to me? And who are we that we could receive from you your word? In the name of Yeshua, amen. So we, we continue with the study of the Tabernacle, part 67, and the Ark of the Covenant, part 18. Oh, wow. However, <laughs> look not, look like never end. Eh? Yeah, the word of Elohim is a drying fountain. It uh, never ends. So in the first part of the Ark of the Covenant, we saw that Elohim commanded Moses to the Ark of the Covenant fairly Anything, anything else for the Ark of the Covenant is the most important. Then in the Ark of the Covenant part two, we saw that the most holy place contained only the Ark of the Covenant. And this put emphasis to the fact that Elohim, he is a hal. I like it when uh, Brother John said he is one. He, the word didn't say he is one, two, three persons. He is only one and not three distant persons composing one true God. Then in the Ark of the Covenant part three, we learned that the Ark of the Covenant is known in the scriptures as the Ark of Testimony, the Holy Ark, the Ark of Elohim and the Ark of your mighty. Later in the Ark part four, we learned that the Ark is a chest and its purpose is to gather, to keep and protect Elohim treasure. Elohim treasure is the two tablet stone the jar of man and the Aaron staff. Then in the Ark of the, in the Ark of the Covenant, part five, I present, we presented three examples in the scriptures of covenant that people made a uh, three example of covenant with different a social status. Then uh, later in the Ark of the Covenant part seven, six, we, we learned that Elohim, Elohim made seven covenants with men because the number seven is Elohim number. 
afterwards, in the Ark of the Covenant, part seven, we we saw that we saw that Elohim made a covenant with Moses, and then he made one with Phineas. After that, we saw that Elohim made also a covenant with King David. And this covenant uh, was a covenant of salt. What is meant? Covenant of, covenant of salt is a eternal covenant, a everlasting covenant. After that, later, in the uh, in the Ark of the Covenant, part nine, we learned that Elohim made a covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And this took place in Yeshua when he celebrated the meal of Pesach with his 12 disciples. So, in the Ark of the Covenant, part 10, 10, we spoke about the atonement cover of the Ark. And we saw that it was in this covering cover that once a year, the high priest sprinkled blood on the, on the cover to, uh, to atone the sin of all the people. Now, in the Ark of the Covenant, part 11, we saw the nature of the two cherubim on the atonement cover. And we said that they were made of gold, pure gold, and of one piece with the covering. Then, in the Ark of the Covenant, part 12, we said that the two, the two cherubim were, were witnesses of Elohim with ancient plan. Later, in the Ark of the Covenant, part 13, we saw that the measures and the materials uh, reveal, point out to Elohim and Yeshua. After that, in the, in the Ark of the Covenant, part 14, we presented the two poles of the Ark, and we said that the, them were made with a kakia wood covered with gold. Later, in the Ark of the Covenant, part 15, we study about the gold molding of the Ark the four gold rings and the four corners. Then, after, in the arc part seven thing, in the arc part six thing, we saw that the arc represents Elohim and Yeshua as well. Then, in the arc of the covenant part seventeen, we learned that the, the ark is a unit and we cannot have access, we cannot access to what is inside the ark without passing, passing by the covering cover, the lid, the, the atonement cover. Now, let's start the Ark of the Covenant, part 18. We know that the most holy place contained only the Ark of the Covenant, we said before. However, the Ark had a lid called the Atonement Cover. We know that. Moreover, the two cherubim were made of one piece with the cover. And what, what position they had? They were looking 
toward the atonement cover. Now, in the ark, we said that the ark, uh, in the ark below, below the lid were the two tablets of stone, the man of jar, and uh, the Aaron staff. We are going to read Exodus chapter 25, 19, 20, 21. Now, they are to made, make an arca of acacia wood, two and a half cubits in length, one and a half cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Take one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other end of one piece with the atonement cover. You are to make the cherub between at it to end. The cherubim are to spread out their wings above, shielding the atonement cover with their wings, each facing its companion. The faces of the cherubim are to be turned toward the atonement cover. You are to put the atonement cover on top of the ark and inside the ark, you will put the testimony that I will give you. I will meet with you there. I will speak with you from above the atonement cover from between the two cherubim that are on the ark of the testimony about all that I will command you. So, the testimony is about the two tablets of stone. So the question is, where were the two tablets of stone given? It's very relevant, important to know, to know this information. When we look, when we search, when we study the scriptures, we see in some places that the two tablets of stone were given in the, in the Mount Sinai, San, Sinai, Sinai. In Exodus 24, 12, we could see clearly. Exodus, yeah. In Exodus 20, uh, 24, 12, and, uh, and also in Exodus 31, 31, 18, 24, 12, it's when Elohim tell Moses and uh, command Moses to go up to the mountain. And then he said that he was going to give uh, the two tablets of stone and the instruction for the people. After that, in Exodus 31, 18, as we could read here, uh, it says, when he had finished speaking with him on, on Mount Sinai, he gave the two tablets, tablet of the testimony to Moses, tablet of stone written by the finger of Elohim, God. So we see that is the Mount Sinai, Sinai. but in the same times, when we read, uh, study the scriptures, we see that throughout the scriptures, we found also Mount Oreb. So the question is, which one, uh, which one is gonna be the good one? If we could read in Deuteronomy chapter nine, seven, nine. Uh, remember, never forget how you provoke Adonai, your God, to rats in the wilderness. From the day you left the land of Egypt until you came to this place, you have been rebellious against, against Adonai. At Oreb, you provoke Adonai to wrath. And before Matthew, we see Malachi. Uh, in the book of Malachi, Elohim uh, uh, tell the, uh, and remind us that, that we need to remember the 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 law he gave to Moses for the people Malachi 4:4 4, 4. it says he says remember the law of my servant Moses the decrees and law I gave him at Oreb for all the people 
So why we have two is because it's the same, it's the same place, it's the same region. For example, when we speak about uh, Zion and Jerusalem, is the same. Zion is the region and Jerusalem is in Zion. So it's the same with uh, Sinai and Orev is the same. Did you know that even the Paul, Shaul, he, he come to this place? He came to the Mount Sinai, Sinai the Mount Oreb. How? Why he, he came to this place? Because the, the, there is the cradle where the, the, the commandment, the instruction were, were, were given. And how, how is possible that he came there? There is why he came, why he chose to come. He came when, uh, after he went, he, he converted to Yeshua. After he met Yeshua, uh, when he, uh, we, uh, when he met Yeshua, after that, he decided to come to the Mount Sinai or Ev. And the scripture says that, that uh, as Shaul uh, neared Damascus on his way, a great light, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And then what happened? He fell. And when he, uh, he fell, uh, uh, to the ground, he heard a voice, but what uh, was uh, the characteristic of the voice? That the voice was powerful uh, and the light was radiant. So from the light, from this ev event, uh, Yeshua speaking tells Shaul, 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 why are you persecuting me? Shaul, he didn't know who he was. He said, who are you, Lord? Then Yeshua answered him, I am Yeshua, Jesus, the one you, uh, you persecute. The, he experienced something amazing, so power with, uh, so powerful. The, the thing is that that moment, this event, it was in the same, it, it's a equal, same as he was uh, before Elohim. So Shaul, he was, he got confused about that. Why? Because he knew he was a, a teacher uh, of the Torah, and he knew, and he remember uh, uh, the Deuteronomy chapter thirteen. What is written in the in in this scripture? It says that if someone raised, uh, if a prophet raised from the the people of Israel, and that person start to to preach, to give prophecy, and all the prophecies come. Uh, 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 come through, and as and this prophet uh, start to make miracles, and but suddenly the prophet enticed the people and says, "Use the people to go after other gods." Elohim says, "Don't follow him. You are only to love Elohim and keep." His commandment. Don't follow follow someone else. That's why Shaul was confused. That's why it required to him to come back to the cradle, cradle, the place where the Ten Commandments were given, spoken and given. What happened? And this we could we find in 
in the book of uh, Galat, chapter uh, 1, 15, 16, says, when, but when God who set me apart from birth and called me through his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me so I would proclaim his him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately I uh, did I did not immediately consult with any human. I did not go up to Jerusalem to those who were emissaries before me either. Instead, I went away to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. He did the what was uh, the right decision. But the, when when he was there in Mount Oreb, then he received the answer. He discovered that the one who spoke to Moses was the same who he had met on the journey to to Damascus. Was the same. So because that. Because what, because uh, what he discovered that allowed him to keep uh, go his journey, not to persecute the 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 follower of Yeshua, but to uh, this allow him to follow Yeshua and honor Yeshua, work for Yeshua, and preach Yeshua and the Torah to the, all, all the other nations. So, where now, where is the Mount Sinai? The Mount Sinai or Mount Oreb is in Midian. We know the, the, that Midian is the place, the same place where Moses uh, uh, fled, to where Moses fled after uh, he quit Egypt. He was fleeing from Pharaoh, he went to Midian. Chap Exodus chapter 2, 15. We could see, read it. When Pharaoh heard about this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and settled in the land of Midian, where he sat down by a well. So we know that, uh, that Moses stayed there. 40 years and he beca became a shepherd and and there he served his father-in-law uh, Midian uh, Jethro Jethro and uh, but Midian is the region and Midian is also uh, a name of uh, a man who is Midian Midian is the descendant of Abraham and Ketura. After uh, Sarah passed away, uh, Abraham took another wife, and the name of this wife wo woman was Ketura. And Ketura bore son, children, and in between, uh, and he she bore Midian. So he he settled in this place, and the name of the region was. His name because he was the principal person there. So in that place in Midian, Elohim prepared Moses, and is there that Elohim appeared to Moses uh, on a bush. And the, uh, because Elohim had a purpose uh, with Moses, Moses had to lead the people and take the people out from Egypt and bring to uh, the place where Elohim wanted. We see in Exodus chapter three, verse one and two, 
Now Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Midian. So he led the flock of the, to the far farthest end of the wilderness, coming to the mountain of God, Oreb. Then the angel of Adonai appeared to him in a flame of fire from within a bush. So the, he looked and saw the bush, bush burning with fire, yet it was not consumed. You see here is Oreb. So when you see go in the Hebrew dictionary, biblical Hebrew dictionary, you see that Sinai is a mountain of Arabia. And Oreb is the name of, for the Sinaitic mountains. So just to say, to repeat the same, that is the same, the same place. So Miriam is in Saudi Arabia. But how come, why Elohim choose a mountain in Arabia? The reason is because Saudi Arabia is part of the inheritance that Elohim gave and promised to Abraham and to the people. Genesis chapter uh, 15, 18, it uh, says, on that day, Elohim cut a covenant with Abraham saying, I give this land to you, to your seed from the river of Egypt to the great river, the Ephrates river. So, after Elohim took all the people from, es, from uh, uh, slavery, he took the people and, and they bring to the mountain and there he, Elohim set up the limits, the boundaries. And again, he reminded what he gave to Abraham. Every place where the sole of your foot tread, treads, will be yours from the wilderness to the Lebanon, from the river, the river Ephrates, as far as the Western Sea will be your borders. You know that if you make a research, you are gonna find that since the people get out from slavery, because Elohim said, uh, said that wherever they walk, after they quit, they quit Egypt. After that, wherever they walk, this land will be uh, will belong to is the Israelites. So what the Israelites did during forty years, they chisel the stones. You are going to discover that all the stones, the smallest stone in the wilderness, many, 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 because they were a lot, it was a crowd, almost three or six million people, they chiseled the stone. So that is amazing because the government in Saudi Arabia, they cannot uh, throw or they cannot remove the stone because there is thousands, thousands of the stone chiseled by the Israelites. So it's exactly what Elohim said. Saudi Arabia belongs to Israel. It's coming, it's coming. The prom we are going to see the, the, the promise uh, be fulfilled. What happened? Why? Uh, Saudi Arabia is not uh, to Israel in this moment because the disobedience, because the sin of the people, because that Elohim didn't give them right away the, the land of Midian. But the time is coming that Elohim will extend 
and the land of Israel. And he's going to recover what he promised to Abraham and to the people. All what is uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and this place is going to be uh, according to his word. It's going to be Israel. And this it, uh, it, uh, it's uh, important. And it's going to be uh, a need. It's going to must to be according to his word because from all the corners of the, of the earth, from all the cardinal points, from all the countries, a lot of people are going to start to come to Israel. So we will need a place in Israel. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, 1 and 2 says, I like it for what, how it's written, sing, barren, one who has not given birth, burst into singing and shout. You who have not uh, traveled, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married one, says Adonai. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out your tabernacle curtain, do not hold back. Uh, extend your cords. You see, it's speaking about there when we see it's like the tabernacle, but it's about the land of Israel because the time it, uh, there will be millions of people that are going to go to Israel when the Messiah will be there. Now, when were the tablets stone given? Tablets of stone, we know that were not given in Exodus chapter uh, 20. In Exodus, what, uh, what happened is that Elohim, he, 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 he gave the words. He pronounced the ten, uh, commandment at the eyes of all the people. The Ten Commandments were given when? When given? few chapter after in the in cha, in Exodus chapter 24 12 there Elohim gave the two tablets of stone to Moses in Exodus chapter 24 12 there Elohim told Moses to go to the mountain to up to the mountain uh, to receive the two tablets of stone and all the instructions so Moses went there and spent 40 days fasting. No, no, no food. He spent this time there. And after, in Exodus uh, 31, 11, 18, is only when Elohim uh, gave to Moses the two tabling stone uh, and he Take it, he received. When he came down 40 days after, what was his surprise? The people lost patience because he delayed. And then they surrounded Aaron and told them, tell him, make gods for us, make our idols to go before us. So he obeyed. He made a, a golden calf, and they start to, to, to worship and prostitute them spiritual. And they commit a, a, a spiritual adultery. So when Moses saw that, he burst in anger, and he break the two tablets of stone. So what? is the meaning of 40 days. 40, the number 40 in Hebrew is a test, is to be tested. After 40 days, the people lost possession. Yeshua, he spent 40 days in the desert without uh, uh, fasting. But thanks God, thanks him, 
to him that he prevailed, he overcome, he, he resist the temptation, he overcome the enemy. And, uh, and what happened when Moses saw the people he break the, the atomic stone and later, later, uh, Elohim told Moses to chisel two new tablets. This time it was not Elohim uh, who would make the tablets stone, but it's going to be Moses. And he went back to the mountain, to the top of the mountain. And then Elohim again, once more time, he gave, he engraved the 10, uh, the ten words. We could read uh, in Exodus 32, 19, when uh, Moses reminded the people that they were, uh, uh, they, uh, they commit sin, and because that he he broke the the tablet stone, and there he says that he spent forty days on the mountain. Exodus thirty two nineteen. You you could. Another thing that why this tablet stone are special. What makes this tablet stone special? What is special is that Elohim himself, he took the time. Elohim himself. He engraved his own words, the ten words, what we know as the Ten Commandments. And we know that is the only time or the only place in the scripture that Elohim himself he wrote, uh, he write with his own finger of fire in the Torah. And in the book of Daniel, we have another example. The, all, the, the only two examples that we have there, the Ten Commandments, and Daniel. In Daniel was when he wrote a judgment on the wall. The King Belshazzar, he was taking all the furniture of the temple, the cup, golden cup, and uh, to worship his king, his uh, God. He was drinking wine in the golden cup of the temple. So uh, suddenly a hand start to read to writing on the wall. What was the writing? Mene tekelu harasim. Your days, you have been put in, in on a scale and you are lack. You are not fair. You are not justice. That's why your kingdom is put on an end. You are going to die and you are going to lose everything. It is the only time that God uh, write, uh, uh, read, write. But what about the, all the scriptures? The other scriptures were men like Moses, Daniel, David. They took the time to write what Elohim dictated. What Elohim spoke to them and they write what Elohim said. We could see that when Yeshua came, when Yeshua came 2000 years ago, uh, the four gospel was written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeshua, he didn't, uh, uh, didn't write uh, the gospel. Why? The followers, these followers, they saw Yeshua, they hear, heard Yeshua, he wrote his word, 
and they saw their deeds, all the miracles he did, and they wrote. The only time Yeshua wrote was when the people brought to him uh, uh, an adulterous woman. Then he, he started to uh, write on the doors. What he was writing, perhaps, maybe was the same, the 10th commandment. The seventh commandment, you will not commit adultery. So the same who wrote the 10th commandment was there before all the people and before the, the, the adulterous woman. woman. And who is the woman? We know that all the scriptures, some people, they see the Bible like a good, a nice history, a good book to read. Uh, uh, it's like, a, uh, you know, uh, but the, the Bible, what you have in your hands, what we have at home, is not only a good book of history, is the word of Elohim. Every detail, as I repeat all the time, every point, every comma, every word, every sentence, every history, every character has a meaning and a purpose. Who represents this woman, this adulterous woman? Represents the house of Israel, represent Israel, us, represent us. Yeah, when we see Isaiah chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, I think it should be Isaiah chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, thus says Adonai, where is the where is the divorce certificate by which I send your mother away? Or to whom of my creditor did I sell you? See, you were sold for your iniquities and for your transgressions, your mother was sent away. Why was no one there, there when I came? Why was there no one to answer when I called? Is my hand too short to redeem? Or have uh, no power to deliver. Behold, I dry up the sea at my rebuke, and I make rivers a wilderness. Their fish, fish sting for lack of water and die of thirst. And when we see Jeremiah chapter 31, 22, you are going to use, it says, Thus says Adonai Sabaoth, the God of Israel, yet again, Will they use this expression in the land of Judah and its cities when I will return them from exile? Just Adonai bless you, O dwelling of righteousness, O mountain of holiness. When we keep continue with the verses, you will see that is the same. Is about the in faithfulness of Israel. So the, uh, the woman represents Israel. So now let's see the Hebrew definition of tablet stone. You are, uh, I, I present the definition because we are going to understand later. Uh, in Hebrew, tablet stone, it, uh, it, uh, when we said tablet, the tablet is in the number 3871, and in Hebrew is lua, luach. There is for a tablet of stone, wood, metal, board, plate, table. There is for tablet. But when we see a stone, is the number H68. And a stone is even. We are going to use later, not the next teaching. So, why two tablets of stone? Why not only one? Or why not uh, three? 
everything has a purpose. Always the work of Elohim is, there are many history, many experiences, but it's about Elohim, his love for us, the human being, his grace he put out, and his beloved is the human being, and he chose Israel. So it's a, everything is about Elohim and his bride, his, his people. So why did Elohim write the Ten Commandments in two tablets? One was not enough? Is not that the answer. And we see that the, the tablets of stone, the scripture didn't mention uh, the measure. There is no dimension. Why? Because the 10 words of Elohim no have limits. The 10 words will remain forever. And every word that comes out from the mouth of Elohim, it's eternal. We cannot uh, put uh, uh, in close or uh, put limits on, on that. That's why there is no measures. The word of Elohim, the Ten Commandments, is is a, like a, a it's a, a it's like a fountain that never uh, dry a drying never drying fountain. The same is forever. Uh, why two tablets of stone? Because uh, the two tablets allude and point out point out to the two houses. I don't know, but uh, in the beginning I had in the mind, I'm um, ex-nervous. I heard this word uh, somewhere, ex-nervous, excited and nervous. So it's like uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> no. So the two tablets stone point out to the two houses, the house of Israel and the house of of Judah. And the, the house of Israel, we know that are the 10 tribes from the north and the house of Judah are the two, uh, the two, uh, the two tribes on the south. So what this means? The two tablets of stone is only for Israel, the 10 tribes, or is only for the, the, the house of Judah? The Jews uh, or the, to the kingdom of the south? No. The, ten, the 2000 stone, the 10 commandments is for the 12 tribes. Is for all Israel, the Israelites, and also is for all the people who wants, whoever would like to come to the Elohim of Israel. How it is possible? Yes. When the people get out from Egypt, a huge multitude joined the people of Israel. And who was on the mountain, be, uh, on, the, on the feet of the mountain, when they received, uh, when they heard the Ten Commandments, where the 12 tribes lost a huge multitude from Egypt, Egyptian people, and other people from other countries, nations. So the Ten Commandments, not li to not lie, you shall not lie. And it is for us. But keep Shabbat, it is for the house of Judah only. No, no, no. All of the, them are for us. And who wants to come to Elohim. It's for the 12 tribes. You know, you are going to listen more and more that, that uh, the house of Judah, what they want, they want to keep the Torah, the Ten Commandments only for them and the Torah. And what they teach to the people, those who believe in the God of Israel, they said the Torah is for them, 
and the Noah, the love Noah are for the older nation. It's a big lie. There is, when we ignore the scriptures, uh, is that people believe these kind of things. That's why we need to know the scriptures. We need to feed ourselves with the scriptures. We need to have thirst of the scriptures. We need to drink the water, which is the word. We need to know what we have inheritance. The biggest inheritance you got in you is Yeshua, and Yeshua is himself and all his word, all the Bible. So, so if we don't uh, want to be deceived or uh, start to be, uh, start to shake, oh, people say, religious people says that we are to follow only that. Don't believe. Don't believe. We need to know the scriptures. Like that, we are going to be, we are going to know what the scripture says. All what is written in the scriptures is for us the blessing and the obligation. The victories, the victories Yeshua uh, got on the cross is for every one of us and the obligation also. So the tablet stone, we know that is like the two lungs. lungs. We know the Deuteronomy 6.4, we need to, this word I gave you and I command you this day, you are going to, uh, must to be in our heart, in the heart, in our mind, in our heart. And we need to teach all the, all, and remind every day what is written in the scriptures. And we need to share and impart and to teach our children. Is, that's why the Kitabli Stone is, is like uh, our lung. We breathe. Uh, uh, automatically we don't think to breathe it's like natural it's the same with the scriptures we need to dig the scriptures we need to imme be immersed with the scriptures just naturally we don't need to make effort not need to be normal that the follower of yeshua need to need to, to, to just normal, it, it's going, it need to be normal to see the letter of, the loving letter that Yeshua uh, gave us, his word. So the two tablets of stone have uh, a similarity with the rock at Oreb. The rock at Oreb was split in two. We are going to see There is a, when the people were in, in the wilderness, they start to, to complain. So, and they start to say, hey, Moses, oh, why you take out from Egypt? Over there we have onions, we have meat, we have uh, water. Hey, we have the river, the river Nile, enough water to drink. We need to push the crocodile inside and we are going to drink water. But here, what we have, we don't have nothing. We don't have anything. We don't have, there is no water. What we're going to do? We are going to die. And they come. So he came to see Elohim. Moses came to see Elohim. And Elohim tells a strike, a, 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 the rock, and I will be there. And water is going to Flush is gonna uh, gush, gush, it's gonna gush from the stone. He did exactly that. He struck the the first time was the commandment was to strike the the rock and water uh, uh, gush from there and a flowing river uh, uh, appear to 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 quench the thirst of three, five, uh, four million of people. So we see that the two tablets stone remind us, uh, it uh, alludes to the rock and who is the rock. We are going to see it later. It alludes that the water comes through the rock. So 
the word of Elohim is like two other. So the two tablets of stone are like uh, the two hemispheres of the brain, left and right. I mentioned a uh, few months ago, the two tablets of stone, uh, also, why two tablets of stone? Is because in one tablet of stone was written the fourth commandment of that belongs to Elohim. How we love Elohim, someone that we cannot see, we saw his creation. It's amazing. But how we love him? When we believe that he is one, that he is the one who, who take, took us from slavery. And when we believe that he is the only Elohim, the Elohim of Israel, and his name is Yahweh. When we uh, don't take his name in vain, when we, uh, when we don't make idol, when we keep Shabbat, there is the way to love Elohim. There is one tablet of stone. And the so second tablet of stone is the sixth commandment that speaks the way how we love our neighbor. Love, honor our father and mother. Brother Jamie is, is uh, teaching about that amazing series. So, also, the two tablets of stone are like, did you see? Uh, it's like uh, two shields to protect. We need two shields. One is not enough. <laughs> Usually we use one shield, but two. Those who have the testimony of Yeshua, of Jesus, and keep his commandment will be spiritually protected. You know, sometimes we believe in Yeshua. That's very, we have faith in Yeshua. We believe in Yeshua, but we don't keep the commandment. But the one who have both keep uh, Yeshua and his commandment will protect it. The one who loves Elohim, Yahweh, keeping the fourth uh, commandment and love his neighbor, neighborhood is spiritually protected. Now uh, we are going to uh, finish with that. I'm going to make a, a conclusion. So we saw that we saw the content of the ark. We said that in the ark was the two tablets of stone, the man of jar, and the iron staff. And what we saw, we saw uh, the, the two tablets of stone. And what we said is that the two caravan are, are looking at the blood of, uh, on the atonement cover. And also they are watch, watching below the lid below the atonement cover. Why? Because inside the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant was the two tablets of stone, the man of jar, and the iron stone. Staff. And, uh, and what we, uh, what I, I spoke to this morning was only about the tablets of stone. But next time I'm going to speak about the Ten uh, Commandments, not exactly as Brother John, something <laughs> uh, going to be something different. Yeah, we concentrated only with the tablets of stone, uh, but I didn't finish. I'm going to keep uh, continue with the two tablets of stone, the stone, not the writing. So we spoke about the uh, three treasure. And we, we said that the two tablets of stone were given at Mount Oreb. 
the Mount Horeb is the same as the Mount Sinai, in the same place, the same region. And we said that, uh, that uh, the Sinai or Mount Horeb is in the South, in, uh, Saudi Arabia. And we mentioned also uh, that the, uh, the Mount Ara uh, Sinai is in Arabia because this place, the country Arabia, Saudi Arabia and Yemen belongs to Israel, according to the scripture. It's the inheritance Elohim gave to Abraham and to the, all the people. And soon, this place is gonna be is going to be returned to the owners, Israel. We also said and mentioned that that the two tablets of stone were given uh, were given uh, in chapter uh, thirty one uh, twenty four thirty one eighteen, and it was. Uh, uh, 40 days af after uh, Moses go up, uh, go up, and it was lay after the words of Elohim were mentioned after uh, uh, in the in chapter 20. Also, we said that uh, the two tablets of stone are special because. On the tablet stone, Elohim engraved his ten words with his own thing. And so, what we could say about that is that uh, the scripture is faithful and is a, a chest of treasure. More we study. Even if we, we even if we know the history, how many times I have read the scripture, how many times I read uh, the history of Joseph, and every time I read, it it uh, move my heart, stir my heart. Why? Because the spirit of Elohim is there throughout all the scriptures. Elohim spirit is there, is working. When we take time, he speaks to us. And every day, as the same, every day we eat. Maybe the same food that we ate yesterday, the same that uh, we are still eating all whole year. But every day is like something new. Every day we enjoy to eat. Every day this food uh, make his work on us, in us. Every day, this food, the same poutine, the same hot dog, it uh, feeds us and, ma and maintain our body uh, alive. It's in the same way, the scriptures. So the message today or the, the is that let's go. If, if we don't have the habit to dig and to love and to study scripture is not too late. We could start today. Every time when we come uh, to read the scriptures, is not the word of Elohim. It is not the newspaper. It's not a book of uh, of uh, Charlie Chaplin or or uh, or someone else. Is the word of Elohim. This book. The scriptures is alive and it's gonna work in our life and it's gonna transform us and every day does something new in our life. So uh, Elohim bless you and have a, a blessing Shabbat. Okay, okay. So we are going to uh, pray to finish and we're going to.